In today's video, I'm reviewing a 2011 Mini Cooper Countryman. This is the first generation model of the Countryman, which was produced from 2010 to 2016, seeing a minor refresh for the 2014 model year. The Countryman takes a lot of the flavor and design language that you get in the smaller Mini Coopers and puts it into a package that's much more family friendly with the option of all wheel drive. On the styling front, the Mini Cooper Countryman is very similar to its smaller Mini counterparts. A lot of the same design cues and overall language that you see in those models really carries over to this model as well. The headlight design, the grille profile, the way that the, um, the roof and the windows kind of floats over the body, it just has a lot of that same uh, design flavor that you get in those other models. And obviously Mini was trying to capitalize on the popularity of the crossover market with this vehicle. Uh, maintaining a lot of that design language that you get in those other vehicles but offering the benefits of a slightly more spacious cabin and then of course the all-wheel drive option. The design language of the uh, Mini brand is definitely kind of a love it or hate it. Uh, some people think that it's a little bit too over the top and other people just can't get enough of it. Personally I'm a big fan of the design language that Mini uses um, on the exteriors of its vehicles, the inside gets to be a little bit too much for me. But what's really cool about these vehicles is that they are so unique. There's nothing else on the market that's really quite the same. It does give you the feeling that you're in something that's very uh, one of a kind um, and it's fun in that sense. You'll see that this is the Cooper S model. You get the dual exhaust with that. Little Cooper S designation there. That indicates that it's got a slightly more powerful engine, as well as some other design language. Gives it a sportier look than base versions of the Countryman. And while the Countryman is a crossover vehicle, if you really look at the weight and the proportions of the vehicle, it's actually still quite small. Very big compared to the coupe and hatchback versions of the Mini Cooper, but at the same time, still pretty small when you compare it to other crossovers on the market. Of course, that translates to a very fun driving experience. Also results in a little bit of lost functionality inside the vehicle in terms of cargo capacity and space for the occupants. The Mini brand is actually owned by BMW, and you can definitely uh, gather a little bit of that sense driving the vehicle, the sound that the engine makes, the exhaust, um, and just the overall driving experience. It's a very fun car to drive. And then of course the fact that modern Minis are, you know, in theory built by BMW is definitely an improvement in reliability compared to the older Minis, um, which suffered from pretty poor reliability. Countryman is the first Mini um, under BMW ownership to be produced outside of the United Kingdom. One thing that's also very unique to the Mini brand and carries over to the Countryman is that they offer a lot of unique color schemes. And so you can see on this model that below the windows you've got kind of a greenish brownish color and then above it's all black. A lot of different combinations to kind of mix and match colors. Uh, sometimes you'll see the mirrors will have a British flag or some other unique color scheme on it. Likewise, you'll sometimes see that on the roof where it'll be slightly different color. It's a very fun car in that sense because there is a lot of opportunity to customize. So you've got a panoramic sunroof up here. It's actually two separate sunroofs that will both uh, tilt up and so you can actually get a little bit of air into the front and rear. And so the rear uh, sunroof will tilt up as well as the front at the same time. If you want to slide the front sunroof back and get a larger opening, then the back one closes. So you can't slide both of them, but you can tilt both. A lot of attention to detail on this vehicle to give it a very unique look. You can see with the chrome strip that separates the body from the windows, chrome accents on the door handles, little blinker side indicator here. Very 
one of a kind. And just as we saw in the exterior, and as I alluded to earlier, as you jump into the Countryman, it's also got a very unique interior design, uh, very British, and pays a lot of tribute to the original minis. And while it's kind of a unique design that's got a very one-of-a-kind feel to it, um, it is a little bit different, it takes some getting used to, although I'm sure after you've owned the vehicle for a while, um, it probably becomes second nature. Give you a picture of what I'm talking about. Behind the steering wheel, we've got a tachometer. The speedometer is actually placed here in the middle. We've got our audio controls, so this controls volume, preset control, as well as presets in here. Uh, station controls, you can uh, adjust the station here. Um, as we go down, this is a CD player. You've got your climate control, which can be a little confusing. Uh, driver window, the driver side uh, rear window, the passenger side rear window, and then the front passenger window, and then door locks. Uh, if you're not used to driving a British vehicle, that's a little bit unusual to get used to. Likewise, we can see our window lock is down here, uh, sport mode, traction control, and then you've got your fog light control down here as well, even though all the other lighting controls are up here on the steering shaft. And so it's a little bit uh, different in that sense. Uh, likewise, as we look through, you'll see that it's just got kind of a unique design to it. This is your parking brake. It looks like a control out of an airplane. Um, they've got this little shaft that goes down the middle of the vehicle, and you can get various accessories that attach to it. So you can see we've got a cup holder here that you can slide back and forth to your preferred placement. Likewise, you've got this little um, container for sunglasses that um, attaches and can slide forward and backward. So kind of a unique feature, um, definitely very different from what you get in other brands. Seats are pretty comfortable and you can see they've got a pretty sporty profile to them. In terms of uh, features and options, the Countryman does come fairly heavily loaded. And again, this is an S model, so it's a little bit higher end than your base model. See again here, controls are a little bit different. That's for your power mirrors. It's got a Harman Kardon audio system. This is an option on the Countryman. It has really great audio characteristics, really nice system. Get those stainless steel accents with the Cooper S as well as the floor pedals. This model, of course, is a six-speed manual. Up here, we've got our sunroofs. I mentioned earlier that it's a panoramic. It's really more of a dual sunroof. So as I uh, suggested earlier, you can tilt both the front and rear sunroof, and then the driver, or the front uh, sunroof is able to slide. Jumping into the back of the Countryman, you'll see that it's a four-passenger vehicle. Uh, probably a good call on Mini's part because having a middle row seat wouldn't really be that functional anyway, and by just having the two bucket seats, it makes it a little more comfortable for those rear passengers. Of course, we see that little um, shaft going through the middle of the vehicle with the cup holder accessory on that that you can adjust. And overall, again, we see some of that same design language up front carried over to the back very unique, one-of-a-kind design. And just look at that window control there. You don't see anything like that in any other vehicle. Very unique. Pretty nice cabin space with the dual sunroofs. Brings a lot of light into the cabin. Creates a really nice environment for all of the occupants. I'll get you a view looking up to the front. And of course, these seats do fold down. Not completely flat, but fairly close. And as we walk around to the back, you'll see that the latch is integrated into the hatch. And with the ability to fold down those seats, you can get some larger objects in on occasion. However, you can see that with those seats up, cargo space is pretty limited. So if you've got four adults on a long road trip, it might be a little bit tight for um, space in the rear and that's where it really shows that the Countryman is a small vehicle. It gives the illusion of being kind of a small SUV but it's actually considered a subcompact crossover vehicle and it's pretty tight on space in the rear. Definitely doable for a small family but for adults you're going to be a little bit tight on a long trip. You'll see the uniqueness of the Countryman continues up front where there's cutouts in the hood for those headlight fixtures. Gives it kind of a unique look when the hood is up. 
And then under the hood, base versions of the Countryman come with a 1.6 liter four cylinder. With the S package, that adds a turbo, and then later years of the Countryman were offered with the John Cooper Works edition, which added a twin turbo. I'd say that the Cooper S Countryman uh, is kind of a nice middle of the road option, offering zero to 60 time of seven seconds. So it's fairly quick and still pretty fuel efficient. MPG ratings on the Countryman range between 23 and 27 miles per gallon in the city and 29 to 34 miles per gallon on the highway. And that's gonna depend on your transmission and powertrain configuration. You can get the Countryman with either a six speed automatic or six speed manual transmission. And they come in front wheel drive on base versions. And then they've got the optional all wheel drive system, which is called the all four, which can send up to 50% of the power to the rear of the vehicle and was a $1,700 option on new versions of the Countryman. Of course, you'll see those MPG ratings are highest on manual transmission versions and front wheel drive versions of the Countryman. All versions of the Countryman do require premium fuel. Original pricing on the Mini Cooper Countryman started at about $27,000, but options and other powertrain configurations could quickly drive that price up close to the $40,000 mark. The quirkiness of the Countryman really shines everywhere that you look. Even the key for the vehicle is this little circular pod that inserts into this opening and then you push the start button. One thing I really love about Minis is being under BMW ownership, they make them a very dynamic vehicle to drive in terms of the overall experience. The exhaust note is excellent on these vehicles. I'd also highly recommend if you get a Countryman to go with the manual transmission. Uh, really uh, creates a more dynamic driving experience uh, inside of the Mini. And that's one of the great things about the Mini is that it's just a really fun vehicle to drive. Um, everything about the size, the proportions, uh, the look and feel, and then just the fact that it's so small, handles corners really well, uh, all of that just contributes to a really fun driving experience. And it wouldn't be quite the same with an automatic transmission. The manual really just kind of adds to that and really brings things out. You can hear that turbo engaging as you accelerate. Sometimes many uh, vehicles, the engines can feel a little bit uh, kind of clunky. Uh, definitely a good reason to go with the S model. I would uh, urge people to stay clear of just the base 1.6 liter four cylinder. It's gonna be pretty underpowered and uh, take, a take away quite a bit from the driving experience. Whereas the S really offers a pretty nice level of performance. The zero to 60 time on the Countryman is seven seconds, which is pretty respectable, especially for a vehicle with such a small engine and very good uh, fuel economy ratings. You can hear that as the vehicle accelerates, the engine's got a really nice tone. I love manual transmissions and minis too. They're just super easy to drive. If you uh, struggle at all with uh, manual transmissions, uh, Mini Coopers, I think, are probably the easiest vehicle out there to drive. They're so forgiving, uh, very easy to find the gears that you're shifting into. Um, definitely a great car to learn on if you're uh, trying to master uh, the art of driving a manual. Now, one thing I'm not crazy about with the Countryman is that because of the uh, very unconventional dash here with all these dials and knobs and buttons and everything, uh, and the use of a lot of hard plastics, uh, it's kind of a departure from the BMW uh, brand in that sense. And so while you do get a really nice engine and a nice uh, exhaust note carried over from BMW, uh, interior-wise, you don't get the same level of refinement that you get from the BMW brand. And I wish that uh, with minis that it was a little bit more like the Volkswagen Audi relationship, or maybe they weren't quite as nice, but you get a lot of that carryover where uh, Volkswagens have a really nice, high-quality feel to them. Um, similar to their Audi counterparts, maybe not as high end, but still pretty nice. Um, and that's not to say that the Countryman feels cheap, but they do use some of those harder plastics. And the result of that is that it does feel a little bit on the cheap side and you get a few more rattles than you might get uh, with softer plastics. You're not gonna mistake the Countryman for a Mini Cooper Coupe or hatchback, but at the same time, compared to most of the other vehicles that are out there within the crossover segment, the Countryman is still very small and that translates very nicely to a fun driving experience. Um, 
you know, it still has a lot of that go-kart feel that you get in those other models. Um, and the fact that it's got that all-wheel drive system makes it even better going through corners. And I imagine it would handle very well on snowy and icy roads as well. And so it's a great uh, component of the vehicle that, they, that you can get that uh, mini experience in all season conditions. So that's a review of the first generation of the Mini Cooper Countryman. Overall, this is a very unique offering within the segment and kind of offers a one-of-a-kind choice uh, compared with the competition. Very unique, uh, kind of quirky styling. It offers a very dynamic and fun driving experience. And then it offers really good fuel economy. And so there are a lot of great things to be said about the Countryman. And really to kind of sum it all up, it just is so different from anything else that's out there. And so if you want something that really stands out, the Countryman is a good choice in that sense. Of course, there are some drawbacks to that. The overall layout and uh, kind of design of the interior can be a little bit confusing and overwhelming. Although I imagine that with time, you would kind of adapt uh, to that and become second nature and not really be an issue. And then the other thing that's kind of a drawback on the Countryman is that the fit and finish and quality of materials uh, seems kind of cheap. Uh, over time. It seems to have a lot of rattles and things just kind of feel a little bit chintzy. Uh, of course, that's comparing it to other vehicles that were at this price point when they were new. If you compare, uh, say, this vehicle at $10,000 to other vehicles that are $10,000 on the used car market, that begins to be less of an issue. I think the Countryman is still a vehicle that's worth considering because it really does offer a very unique experience in terms of offering uh, such a unique uh, overall feel and then a very fun dynamic driving experience. If you have any comments or questions on the Countryman, leave those in the section below. For more car reviews, subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching.